Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Bill. So today's video is about a lot of people becoming house poor. They bought houses in 21, 20, 22, and things changed. They thought they could afford it, but they can't. And, you know, we're not financial advisors or anything, but we're gonna go over some personal opinions from both of us on things that you guys could do if you're house poor, because at the same time, in my opinion, being a house poor is a sucky feeling. And that's what I mean. I, I wouldn't enjoy the house if I know that 40, 50% of my income is going just towards paying housing expense for me mm -hmm. to live there. It's just, I just wouldn't feel comfortable with it because there's so much more to life. Yeah, you could own a house, mm -hmm. Right? You could own a house yeah. and enjoy yourself, but if you can't afford to go on vacation, go out to dinner, because as soon as you pay your mortgage, you know, you feel like the next thing you know, you have to pay the mortgage payment again. So what's your opinion on being house yeah. poor? Well, you know, the people get into a situation, for various reasons and different things, some unforeseen, um, you know, but getting overextended, getting a little ahead of yourself sometimes, you know, is, is a real, is a real concern um you know just but you got to have a, a monthly budget and a plan and just like we've always talked about you know having that plan in place yeah but you know bill like so many people got into that fomo of fear of missing out the way that whatever they call it you know oh, oh fomo yeah fomo you know oh i, I want to buy a house and i don't want to miss out so yeah i'm stretching it but you know i think my business will take off or i'll get a second job well something you said right there like Go ahead. you're speculating Oh, if I get this, then I can, I'll just do this now. I'm going to do the fun stuff now yeah. before the hard work comes into play. Cause you just said, if my business takes off, I think it's going to do this. You know, you're kind of hedging your bet against something actually happening and you could get into a bad situation like that. Cause you know, there were plenty of people who started businesses, you know, before 2018, 2019. And then all of a sudden who knew that that was going to happen to the world and yeah. You know, and now they don't have an income. Yeah. So, and like, even it's not just houses. People are like, hey, I want that fancy new car and yeah. stuff. And they're like, well, the payments are $1,000 a month. Okay. I could, you know, you'll convince yourself if you really want it, you'll convince yourself right. to buy it. <laughs> you know? Exactly. But you're putting the fun before the work. Yeah. But then after two or three months, you know, making those payments, and you know you're like okay what the hell did i do so anyways that's what today's video is about it's just things you could do so if you like this kind of content do me a favor subscribe it really helps out the channel it's greatly appreciated so bill let me throw out the first one i hate to say this but if you're house poor mm -hmm. if at least if i was house poor i would sell the house i would buy a smaller house yeah, yeah, downsizing. So there's a lot of variables there. So let's take out what we are in right now with, with the higher interest rates. So let's just talk, you know, when everything kind of settles back down, you have to make sure you have enough equity in the house. You've got to make sure that you've got enough to cover the fees and taxes. Um, you know, and if you're downsizing, you know, is there enough available inventory for you to downsize? Getting the house sold isn't going to be your biggest hurdle per se right now, but maybe finding a property that you like is gonna be a bigger hurdle. But if you're in a pinch, you're yeah. gonna have to make some sacrifices. Yeah, so, you know, another thing too, is like some people that I've done in inspections for, insurance inspections, they're like, yeah, we really can't afford this house anymore. We might just walk away. That's the worst thing you could do. You should really get in touch with a realtor. Yeah. Because you may think you can't sell it, but you know, there's, there's things, you know, you don't want it to go to short sale. Can you want to elaborate a little bit on what a short sale is? Yeah. So when you get into a short sale situation, these are legal issues that you've, you should be consulting an attorney on yeah. um, that will bring in a real estate professional to assist you with these things. These are court proceedings, but at the end of the day, the bank is and in essence, the bank is agreeing to take less than what your house is worth, or what, like, excuse me, less than what you oh. owe on the house. Yeah, but the whole thing is that's better than a foreclosure. 
Correct. You know, you might have to pay the deficiency from what I understand. It could be, yeah, there could be some tax implications. That's why, you know, you, 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 if you're going to do that route, you need to hire an attorney that specializes in those kind of situations to advise you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Another thing you could do, Bill, is you can get a second job. I mean, it's not ideal because, you know, you want to enjoy life. You know, you want right. to spend time with family, with your kids and stuff. So... Right, but getting that, you know, just making that decision to take a second job and maybe miss a few TV shows, you know, not condoning, not spending time with family by any stretch. But, um, you know, if you just need to knock down some credit cards to kind of offset that difference that you need to make, you know, grabbing uh, some extra work to accelerate the payment, not buy extra stuff, you know, yeah, but I mean, to actually put it towards paying down some of the debt. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Let me ask you, which, which, in your opinion, would you would you live in a house that your house poor that, say, fifty or sixty percent? What, what is your cutoff? Saying, okay, I'll spend fifty percent of my all my income towards housing. Oof, that's a lot of income. Yeah, but that's what I mean. But but this whole thing is like, what I'm just saying is. It doesn't matter where your price point is. Fifty percent of your income. That's what is I mean. Fifty percent of your income, whether because I know people are probably going well, but if you make. You know, 50,000 or you make a million, 50% yeah. is 50%. Right, that's what I'm yeah. saying by percentages. I'm just saying is, to me, if my housing is important, I agree, yeah. okay? And, but for me, it's just like, if, if I'm stressing mm -hmm. about making the mortgage payment. Yeah. I think my cutoff would be 40 for everything, 40%. Yeah. Okay, that's a that's a good one because it's below where you need to be to qualify. Number one, but forty percent is not too shabby. We're talking interest, taxes, mortgage, insurance, maintenance, yeah. power, electric, the whole shebang. Yeah. All right, Bill. Give me some more information. What, what, what would you do? I know this is. I know you're not a financial advisor. You're a right. realtor. You're not an accountant. But your personal opinion, what do you think you right. could do if you were in that situation of being house poor? If, if I was in that situation, um, I would make sure that I got a really good handle on exactly what my expenses were every single month. I'd write it down on a piece of paper. Okay. What can I cut out? Things like that. I mean, I do that now. Right. You know? Um, because that $5 here, $10 there, it's, it's crazy how fast that adds up. Right. And, you know... If I just took out my Starbucks bill, <laughs> that's yeah. a couple mortgage payments, <laughs> you know, on an annual basis. No, and it's true. It's just funny when you put pen to paper how that works. So I'm like, I could do two additional mortgage payments a year for my family's Starbucks bill, right? Yeah. And that would go directly to principal, which would shorten my loan term, which would save me thousands of dollars All right, in interest. But, but you were talking and about I, too, renting right. before, right? So, those, but those are those little things that you could do to help you save. Right. And also, you know, I would s seek some advice from a financial planner or a credit counselor or something, you know, somebody who specializes in that stuff so that you could make a plan. There's, you know, this is what they get paid to do. Mm -hmm. um, this is what they went to school for. So, right. you know, those kind of things I think would be a really, really good idea to get a handle on, you know, your expenses and then, you know, working all the way up to last resort. Yeah, so basically, what what do you think about renting? If you decided to rent, I would sit down. Now, that's something I can't talk completely okay. about. Right. So if I was looking at renting, mm -hmm. I would take, what is my total expense out of pocket? I wouldn't just look at, here's my mortgage, here's my rent payment. Because you still have, you know, power, water, electric, cable, all that other stuff that goes along with it. And I would look at what my exact, I would weigh it out, you know and see which one saves me money, and then how much is that money gonna save me? Where, where am I going to apply that savings if there is any? So basically, you know, if it's cheaper to rent and you'll, you'll be less stressed paying a rent right. payment, you could always go back into a house and pay, do a mortgage payment. Yeah. So maybe in your particular situation, it might be feasible to sell the house while the market is good. Right. And it, hopefully it's good in your area, and uh, and rent and until you can get reestablished, you right. know, and there, buy a house. Right. There's been people that 
you know, we've been able to help that were in some financial situations and struggles mm -hmm. where we were able to sell the house before they went into a foreclosure or even a short sale, you know, short sale or a foreclosure situation. Right. Because they had so much equity built up in their properties because equity went up in our area so much as it did in a lot of areas of the country. Now I know everybody's different, but right. that's, that's that step going, okay, how much is my house really worth and getting a real valuation at home equity report, not the digital one that you sign up for online, you know, getting a real one, somebody, a human came out there and did an actual valuation. Right. That's true. And we were able to get this individual out of their property. They paid off their debt and they still had a little money left over and they preserved their credit so that they can start over again. And they can buy a house that's more reasonable. Yeah, because they, did, they don't have a foreclosure now, so they can still get a loan and they're debt free. Right. So sometimes, you know, that stinks, but the look on this person's face when it was all said and done was relief. Yeah. Just yeah. in that, I mean, speaking personally on something that I actually did, that was a very, it was a very difficult process for us because it's emotional. Right. And I, I felt for this person, but at the end of the process, when it was all said and done, they were so much happier and so much more relieved. Yeah, because at the end of the day, being house poor, like I said before, yeah. is a sucky feeling, especially a lot of people, a lot of people live paycheck to paycheck, and they're like, yeah, as soon as I get paid next week, I'm making my mortgage payment, and then before you know it, Another 30, 31 days goes by and then you gotta make, make the payment all over again. Right. So that's what I have for this video. You have anything? That's it, just you know, make a plan as always, you know, and then make sure you enlist the correct people to help you make those decisions. Absolutely. Like always, if you like this kind of video, a lot more to come. Do me a favor, consider subscribing and hit the bell notification. It really helps out the channel. Thank you and have a great day and we'll speak to you on the next one. Bye. Take care.